The redemption is happening right now in Israel. I want to talk about what is taking place in the land of Israel this year, after COVID, in the middle of COVID, it doesn't matter. We are in the middle of redemption. What am I talking about? 2,000 years ago, the temples were destroyed. Over 2,000 years ago, the first temple was destroyed. That's why we're commemorating th those events through the, through the fast days of Tisha B'Av. What is Tisha B'Av? We are mourning and we are lam lamenting the destructions of the temples that were built here. There's a, an important story in the Jewish history of Napoleon Bonaparte. And when he passed by one of the Jewish communities where he was uh, passing by, he heard on the ninth of Av the Jews lamenting and praying in the synagogue. So he asked his, uh, his helpers, he said, what is this? What's going on? They said, these are the Jewish people who are praying and lamenting over the destruction of their temples. So he answered them, if this is such a thing that for 2,000 years the Jewish people are still praying for the rebuilding of their temple, most likely God will restore them both to their land and to their temple. So in light of what Napoleon Bonaparte said, I want to connect us with the history of the last destruction of the temple in 70 AD. The Romans came and they tried to destroy the people of Israel, our land, and eradicate us from this land. What I'm holding in my hand is a oil lamp that was used by the Jewish people here just behind me in the ritual purity baths. This was found there with the burn marks of the Roman attempt of that destruction of eradicating the Jewish people. Today, the Romans are no longer. The Greeks, they're no longer. The Babylonians, they're no longer. The Egyptians, nowhere to be found. But today, the Jewish people are here, alive and well, and therefore the redemption is happening right now as we speak. On this very issue, we have today Yair Levi, who is a good friend of mine, musician, songwriter, Levite, who has a passion to lead, uh, in, to lead in worship and, and to, to minister to those coming to worship at the temple when God willing that temple will be rebuilt one day. So to introduce him, I want to read a beautiful quote from Shagnon, who's one of the most famous uh, Jewish poets and, and writers when he received the Nobel Prize for literary uh, work of many years in the 1960s. In his speech, he mentioned the temple and the Levites. He writes, as a result of the historic catastrophe in which Titus of Rome destroyed Jerusalem and Israel was exiled from its land, I was born, he's talking about himself, I was born in one of these cities of the exile, but always regarded myself as one who was born in Jerusalem. In a dream, in a vision of the night, I saw myself standing with my brother Levites in the Holy Temple, singing with them the songs of David, King of Israel, melodies such as no ear has heard since the day of the city of destroyed and its people were sent to exile. So introduce this next segment. We have Yael, who is a Levite, who is doing exactly what Shagnon was wishing and dreaming could be a reality, and I believe we're living that time right now. So we've been filming all over today, different sites talking about 9th of Av, and I think right here where we're standing, we can really see a good, clear picture about the redemption. Because I believe we're living in a time of redemption. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, you can, you can see behind us, you can see the wall. In one hand, you can see the destruction, but on the other, other hand, you can see the rebuild of Israel. We are building Jerusalem. We are rebuild and we are bringing the redemption. That's what we are doing right now. Prophets talked about children playing in the old city. Yep. And that's what, over that's here. Exactly. I, I want them to <laughs> see. Even here, it's like, yeah, that's what's happening right now here. Just, what, just behind us. Yeah. Just behind us, there are uh, songs of joy and celebration for, I believe it's a bar mitzvah, as well, I can tell from yeah. the sound. Yeah, that's, that's uh, how it's here. Uh, but but I, I want to say uh, another thing. We, we know that in uh, Tisha B'Av, we are fasting and murmuring uh, about the distortion of the temple. But uh, our, uh, uh, our prophet uh, promised us that in Tisha B'Av, it will be a very happy day. So right now, we're in the middle of uh, Tisha B'Av. You've seen this video in Tisha B'Av because we are wanted we are praying, but we are praying every day that this Tisha B'Av won't be a sad day. It will be 
a happy day for celebration and the rebuild of the of our temple and it's not only about the temple it's about the people mm -hmm. the rebuild of the people of the Jewish people uh, this is the the real Geula. Uh, I think we're we're in the redemption the, the redemption process has begun in 1948 even before in the 1800s Jews were starting to flood and come back to the land to put their hand to the to the soil um, the, the 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 growth of the of the of of the fruits and vegetables coming back to life, the land coming back to life. Mark Twain, over 200 years ago, or roughly 200 years ago, I believe, he wrote, "What a desolate land, yeah, yeah, Jerusalem! Yeah, exactly. What an armpit!" And thank God for Mark Twain and his almost sarcasm, or in the sense of, like, you know, ha ha, God is dead. And guess what, Mark Twain, you're not here, but you spoke as a prophet of the reality of God's word. Yeah and the redemption, yeah. because thanks to him, yes, it was desolate. Yes, it was destruction, but Bo Hashem, today, it's rebuilt. We have life in the old city, and we have life in the Negev. We have life on the Golan. We have life on the Shvela. We have the life of the Jewish people here, and God is alive and breathing, and we see it. And you know, you know, there's like a very famous uh, um, idea in, uh, in the Jewish faith that you can see the light only when you have darkness. <laughs> so my right. twin is, was kind of um, a reference for us to help us to see what's happening right now. Exactly. He made a great job, <laughs> yeah. a great job. Not even knowing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right now we're on the southern steps of the Temple Mount. Right behind us here, you see the southern wall of the Temple Mount Plaza. And right here to my, to my left, you'll see the steps leading up to the temple. So they would get ritually purified in the, in the purity baths, and then they would walk up these steps going up to the temple. So Yair, can you explain as a Levite, uh, why, are the, why is the steps like this? And how does this play into your responsibility as a Levite for the worshipers going to get ready to worship up on the Temple Mount? So as it teaches me, uh, this uh, this step to the Temple Mount, they are uh, they are not in the same size. Yeah. So the reason why to build this kind of strange thing, like uh, a few short and then long. Yeah, a few short steps and then a long step. So it's not because that they want people to stay and rest in the middle. Yeah, it's a different story. So the main thing here is not to be occupied to your uh, personal thought, is to walk and think all the time about what you are going to do and it's to worship God so the the main thing here is that when you are walking on the step on these steps you stop all the time and thinking what you're gonna do on what you're gonna do and the second thing is to hear the Levite singing so my father of father father fathers uh, was sitting here as I with the uh, uh, instrument and play to the people that were coming to the Temple Mount and help them to be focused on the prayer to God, on the worship to God. Uh, so for me to sit here and to sing here, it's, uh, it's, a, it's amazing. This is a very old step yeah. and you know, when, I'm, when, when we're sing, sitting here, uh, and we're talking about the Bible. Yeah. It's not like you know a legend story. You're right, a fairy tale. This <laughs> is the truth. Yeah. This is what happened here. Yeah. You know. These are real people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it, can you... uh, on these stones, you, 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 you all, all the stories of the of the Bible. Yeah. Been here. And that's the thing. So just go through your mind. You like as far back as you can think in the Bible stories that you can think of in characters, names important people that came and worshiped in Jerusalem, it was here. This we know for a fact. This is Mount Moriah. This is where the Temple of Solomon stood, the Temple uh, uh, of Herod that served the Second Temple period, and so on. The Hasmonean Temple that was built with the Hasmoneans who, who came, but they liberated Jerusalem from the Greeks before the Romans, and they built a temple. And then Herod came and he expanded that. So in other words, there's so much rich history characters people that you can connect to it's real and and, uh, and we live and we live in we the time. live 
in a time that we are the generation that have a lot of responsibility to rebuild Jerusalem, mm -hmm. you know? And we are praying every day in our prayers uh, for the next year in Jerusalem, to rebuild Jerusalem. So this is what we are doing right now in Israel. Yeah. And when we are, uh, went to the army uh, to, 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 uh, to, to fight, to, to defend Israel, yeah. to fight for Israel, this is one of the things, when we are praying for Israel, here in Israel, this is a great mission. And for me as a Levi, to sit here and to sing Shir Lama a lot, this is like to, to, to connect to the most, to the deepest place in, in my soul, in my history. Yeah. Um, uh, I want to say another, another thing. So it's important for me to say that I'm going to sing Shir Lama a lot without instrument today, because we are mourning in Tisha B'Av, for the temple that uh, was destroyed and we're praying for uh, rebuild Jerusalem so that's why we're not allowed to sing with instrument there is a lot of a uh, couple of rules that we're not doing in Tisha B'Av the more you go closer to Tisha B'Av the morning is getting uh, with more and more more rules. emphasis yeah. until Tisha B'Av that it's like a fasting day you're not allowed to play on instrument you're not allowed uh, to do almost anything instead of uh, uh, pray for the rebuild of Jerusalem. Yeah. This is all you need to do. And we, we are reading uh, a Echa book, uh, that this is like um, the crying of the, of the Jewish uh, people for the destruction mm -hmm. of, the, of the temple. And because it we're talking about uh, Tisha B'Av, uh, the night of Av, the day that we are speaking about the destruction of, of our temple, of our nation. Uh, so in this day, we're not allowed to, to, to play on instrument. So that's why I'm going to sing right now Shir Lama, a lot the song uh, that the Levites was singing here. Uh, the, to the Psalms, Psalms of Ascent. Yeah, the, the, for the people, Shir Lama, a lot, it's, it's one of the, the, the translation is when the... To, to, when you go up and this is what you see people uh, doing here going up to the temple <laughs> עושה שמיים וארץ, אל יתה למות רגליך, אל ינום שומרך. הנה לא ינום ולא יישן שומר ישראל. השם שומרך, השם צילך, על יד ימינך. יומם השמש לא יככה, וירח בלילה, השם ישמורך מכל רע, ישמור את נפשך. השם ישמור צאתך ובואך מעתה ועד עולם. מעתה ועד עולם. אמן. 